So welcome everybody, welcome to the uh, webinar, um, Let It Shine. And basically the, we put this together um, as a little, a little celebration um, leading up to, to Christmas. Um, but also when you think about it, um, this time of year is the time of year that we celebrate. And uh, in whatever way, we all do it. Whatever we believe in, we all celebrate in our own way. And it is a year of celebration because in this time of year, what we do is we look at how all the year, how the year has been and everything that we've been through. And looking at 2020, what we've all been through is uh, definitely great change. Uh, if, I think you'd all agree with me. I think everybody in the whole world has been through change in 2020. Um, and that somehow connects us all. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what country you come from. We, we are connected with the common theme. We've all been going through great change. And a lot of people have been finding this year not very comfortable or not nice or, uh, you know, very difficult. And um, isn't it really a, an amazing thing that we can all um, join with each other and understand, you know, on a soul level, what everyone's going through. For when we, when we communicate with people, we connect with feelings. And this time of year, we connect with feelings. So the feelings that we've been going through, if I ask my friends in Canada, if I ask my friends in America, if I ask my friends in, in Ireland or in, in, in whatever country, in Germany or Holland, everyone's been uh, picking up on the same feelings and going through the same thing. And this time of year, when, when normally what, what we do is we celebrate um, and we celebrate that time of letting go of anything that we would, like, we would like to let go of before we move into the new year. And it's really, you know, this time of year, when you think about it, we, we're in the darkest days, you know. Um, they they move the clocks and then the days get darker which means in the darkest days um which means automatically people do not go out um after 4 p.m because it's too dark normally you go for a walk in the summer um but after 5 p.m you're like oh i'm not going for a walk can't see anything anyway so you're coming inside and you're spending more time with your loved ones and your family and when you look at what happens in this time of year, that the trees are losing their leaves, plants are letting go and going within, um, nature is preparing itself for a period of hibernation. And globally, um, we all celebrate this time and it's all the time of coming together and staying within. Now, whether it's going to be with a roast turkey or a vegan roast or, a, um, you know, what, however you, you, you create your celebration, we celebrate it with food and, and candles. We light candles to bring light into our homes. And I remember years ago when I was a young boy that there would always be these candles lit for the coming of this um, uh, sparkling time of year and some people in uh, in the, they're in Christianity they'll be celebrating the birth of Christ and some people will be celebrating the the Chinese change of the year and some people will be changing you know celebrating the time of light and, and spiritualists uh, celebrate it in a different way but every single person celebrates Christmas in their own way and many people do it by filling up their homes with light and decorations and lighting candles. 
And I remember the joy that I had as a child, just like enjoying the moment of, oh, now, now's the time of year that we can put up the lights in the darkest time of the year, in, in the, one of the darkest times of the year. So the days get darker and then we look at this time of year and most people, some people get, quite a lot of people get melancholy, like, oh, did I achieve everything this year that I wanted to achieve? Um, I normally get phone calls from family and we talk about that. Did we achieve everything we wanted to achieve this year? Or are we going to put it on the list to do for next year? Um, and it's a time of year where we say, well, you know, we're going to get together with family and, and celebrate and celebrate Christmas. And really, when you look at it, you know, people that, um, that are into the, um, the Santa Claus movies, like as a child, I remember Santa Claus is coming and the presents are going to be under the tree. And it was a time of giving. And, and when you look at it, it's the time of year that you see the sparkle in people's eyes come back, even if it's for a, a week or two, that they're just like building up and you can see humanity becoming good and, and, and illuminate it and suddenly being able to look into each other's eyes and say, oh yeah, I really, I really uh, wanna be good, you know, coming up to Christmas. And it's like, we've, we've had this from our childhood and yet we can see even those um, for people that work, sometimes you've got those colleagues that you can't get on with. It's the one time of year that they're really nice, um, you know, or you've got colleagues that you can't get on with um, in whatever circles you're in. And suddenly it's the one time of year you think, God, they're a really nice person. Come January, it's gone. But we celebrate that moment where we can become the humanitarian that that inner humanitarian that we are within our soul and everyone celebrates it. It's like this, this awakening uh, on a soul level that our soul really gets it. Our soul really gets what Christmas is about and it really gets what this period is about to celebrate. And everyone has a sort of an arise within their soul moving up to this Christmas period because the stars move into alignment, things happen and we start to, you know, feel the excitement of our children getting ready for a Christmas period. And it is the time when I find that whether you're, you're going, whatever you're planning this Christmas, that you come together as family. And as a family, the most important thing is that we're together. And the most important thing is that we can give to each other. And, you know, the greatest gift is not the gift that you receive. This is what I was told when I was a child as well. I didn't get it back then, but I get it now. The greatest gift is you can give another. You give someone else. It's the joy and the sparkle that you can see in somebody's eyes when you give them something that they needed or give them something that surprises them. And, um, you know, and it doesn't matter what religion you're in or whatever, but when you give that gift and you see the sparkle in somebody's eyes and you see the joy and we bring that illumination, not only with the lies, but we bring that illumination with us giving to each other. And, you know, it's like the darker days we bring the lights, we illuminate our trees with lights, we illuminate our houses with lights, um, and, some, and then we go into the gardens and, and the front, front of, the, of the houses, and we, we bring the light in the darkest days. And, and it's like, at that moment, when you look at a human being's aura, when it changes and they start to believe in the Christmas spirit, like for people that have been working long hours, I remember working in, in, in um, working with people with old timers and dementia, and we're working long hours and we're doing night shifts. And we're like the last week, and you're like, and you're just waiting for that Christmas spirit to hit you. And it's normally on the last day of work. And then you're like, ah, oh, now I can enjoy Christmas, you know? Now I can enjoy Christmas. It's something that we can look forward to. 
And that joy that we have, everyone has in their own way. And if someone was to say to me, is it the present that you receive that gives you the most joy? And I'd say, no, it's not. The most joy is to see the smiles on your family's faces and the smiles on people's faces and the giving what you give. Like my last service that I'll be doing, or one of my last services that I'm gonna be doing, and one is in Holland in Amersfoort Church. And I believe it's this, this coming um, Sunday. And it, that's my service, it's what I give. And to be able to bring the connection of spirit in a spiritual service at this time of year, it's just amazing to feel what other people are feeling as well. And the many services and demonstrations that I've done around this time of year, there's always that vibration of spirituality that suddenly is shifted. It's like people, they see the lights and they see the candles and then they realize the illumination of their own soul. And they realize that illumination that on a soul level, um, we all can be giving and we can all be caring for each other. And it's like forgiveness. So this time of year is a time of letting go. And it's a time of forgiving. And one of the greatest things you need to forgive is maybe forgive, your, forgive yourself. And that's what I normally go through because you contemplate your life for a year, you forgive yourself for all the things you did wrong or forgive yourself for not taking the chances that you thought you should have taken or forgive yourself for not being perfect. But in the forgiveness, you set yourself free. You set yourself free in, in the freedom of um, forgiving and in, in the freedom of self. But then when you forgive others, you say this time of year, you release your resentment on others and say, okay, I forgive that colleague that was horrible to, to me, nine to five, seven days a week for a whole year. This time of year, you forgive them. And that moment of time, you release yourself and you set yourself free. And I'm saying this because it's such a natural thing um, to do, but when we forgive, um, we set ourselves free to a moment of illumination of our soul. And when our soul rises in ascension, in fact, it, what actually happens at this time of year, we all do, it's in the global consciousness. And the global consciousness, we all raise the frequency in our own way. And like I was saying before, it doesn't matter what country you're in, we all do it in our own way. And I find that Christmas is like a celebration, like a thanksgiving for being able to celebrate life together here with our families. And that time of forgiveness and then being together is also a time of acceptance, accepting the things that you cannot change this year and accepting the things that you cannot move or, 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 or alter because this year has passed. But in the acceptance, you can accept yourself as being able to maybe make the changes next year. So I know um, a lot of people would celebrate the 24th or it's the evening. And I know in Germany they do, it's the evening. And, um, they celebrate the Eve and a lot of people celebrate the 25th. And, you know, at those times when you feel the energy globally at those times, it's like suddenly life has become brighter. Suddenly, energetically, the whole world has become brighter. And then people greet each other in the shops, um, now they'll probably have to do it with a certain thing in front of their mouth like this, but they'll say, oh, but they greet each other and they do. And, um, and everyone's like, oh, have a good one and enjoy. And, and, be, and it's like, like humanity is suddenly woken up 
you know, and when we talk about a, a, a like a utopia that we can create on Earth, wouldn't it be good if this stayed the whole year round? Wouldn't it be good if we could have this niceness and caring for each other and giving nature the whole year round? It would certainly be um, a better world if we were, because when we sit in non-judgment and we're sitting with each other in that caring, accepting each other for their gifts, or if I was to accept you all for your gifts and not to criticize your, your faults, then I would be helping you to realize your gifts. But what we tend to do, and that's what humanity tends to do, is we tend to look at the things that are wrong in the world, but we look at the things that are wrong in people. And when we can give people that sense of encouragement, the encouragement is when we can see them in the gift of who they are. Because on a soul level, and uh, it is like everyone is that illumination of light. On a soul level, that spark of divinity, that essence of who you are, that, that spark of energy, that, that life essence, that who you are, that itself, that's what makes you the, the, the human being that you are. And we are here seekers of spirituality, seekers of the spiritual, seekers of truth, um, and yet we, we search outside of ourselves, we search in books, we search in poetry, we search in music, and we're searching to find something that is in alignment with our soul and spark within us. And when we find that something, we suddenly feel, yeah, this is it. This is the spark, this is that thing that can help me remember that spark of divinity inside of me. And when you feel that recognition, you're like, oh, I need to follow this path this way. And the, we call this intuition, or we call this, you know, following our soul's feelings, our soul's light. And when we do follow it truly, we end up in good places and you know even when you're you're in you feel that you're you, you're you're in comfort, uncomfortable in the situation you're in but when you follow your intuition and soul's feelings of where you want to go and what you want to be and 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 you just feel where is my guidance taking me this year um i can hear some of you thinking well obviously not abroad um, but, you know, it's certainly taking you into your home and into you and, and on, online. And, you know, no matter what, we can connect through these modern, modern times, through the computer that I'm speaking for, and through these modern middles that we have. And we can shine our lives in this way, using these modern things. For, for us to realize that we all go through this feelings, like we know when there's a shift on the earth, many people can feel sad when they wake up in the mornings, but when you check in with Canada, America, Holland, Germany, and Ireland, you say, oh yeah, I was feeling it too, right? So we are aware of this global, shift of energy that we all feel. So in this Christmas time and in this Christmas period, the illumination of the soul, the illumination of that light can be felt. And the, you know, there's many, many people that have, uh, have, have looked at, well, I'm on, a, I'm on a spiritual journey and that journey is journeying through life. And, and that's very true. But when you look at it, are you traveling outside of yourself? Because that spiritual journey is on the inside. 
So in this time of year, when all the trees are dying, they go within and they take their power with them and the plants, they take their power with them, they take them into the core of their being and they become one with the energy of who they are. That's what nature does. And then the snow comes on the ground and the frost comes on the ground and everything and wind and storms and you know whatever whatever happens come spring that energy starts to release and it starts to grow and it remembers exactly who it is and it starts to grow and it comes back and it will grow back two times as big as what it was the year before it will grow back bright lighter and brighter so it's in our true nature in this time of year to go within so when we do go within and we light the candles, we may light the candles for our loved ones, I know I do. And I invite my loved ones to join us in the Christmas period as well, for I celebrate this with the spiritual world at the same time. And that is a, a spiritual illumination since we know that when we do it in that way, we have a connection with them. You know, I'm, you know, whenever I'm cooking, I, I can just almost hear my grandmother said, you want to put more time in that. You want to put a bit more pepper on that. You want to do it this way. And isn't that nice that we can be remembered about these ways? I mean, whoever made the best soup was grandmother and whoever did, you know, so you're like, OK, but it's nice to have those memories with you as you're enjoying this period of, of time of life and like I said it's like a time of letting go but it's also a time it's a bit like Thanksgiving in Thanksgiving we give thanks for for the food that we can eat and we give thanks for the for the things that we can have and in this time of Christmas we give thanks for that for being alive and, and for having a new day with family and, you know, me being an empath, like, whenever I, whenever something's bad happening in the world, I'll wake up and I'm like, whoa, I need to, I need to sort myself out. I need to really align myself energetically. I need to ground myself. I need to re regroup myself because I can feel what globally what's going on. But on Christmas, you can feel like suddenly there's been a weight lifted suddenly there's a sparkle of energy everywhere under your feet everywhere and you know it stays like that and globally you can feel like not only the planet you can feel it from the earth you can feel it around you um you know you can feel it in your fingers you can feel it in your toes yeah love is all around you you know um those songs those films that we watch and and, and they're like it's like let's do a Christmas movie marathon, you know, let's do it. Because what it's about is finding that Christmas spirit. And that Christmas spirit, even though, um, you know, we may have gone through some difficult times. And it's the magic of Christmas is like is the magic and that spark within you, in your soul. That is a magic in the self, in itself. And the greatest gift you can give to, to anyone is your love and your compassion and your understanding. And it's a time of year where you think of people, say, oh, I better give them a ring. I better let them know that I care. Because some people, they don't, they don't they're alone and they need connection. And this time of year, normally the most people say, oh, I'm going to give to charity, I'm going to give to this, because in the giving, it's sharing of what you, could, what you can do. And when you can give in this, in this way, um, you can really, you know, think about what service can you bring humanity? For it's like, bringing and giving and serving. It's like, for me, my gifts as a medium, I can work in spiritual churches, I can do online stuff and share inspiration. But anyone 
It doesn't matter who you are. You have a gift. And that gift, when you shift with inside of yourself and you're in a position of love and compassion, you have the greatest gift that you can give anyone. And the gift is you. And a lot of people come to me as a meeting and they say, hey, I want to know, prove to me that life continues. And I do it in spiritual services and I do it in one to one. And I prove that life continues, that there is a life after this life. And that's amazing that they can celebrate with us. But really, what our task is as humanity is our task is to prove that there is life here now. So I say, go forward and prove it. Go forward and bring evidence of proof of life here. Bring, bring your proof of life in humanity. So when you do that, you know, it's like we can, be, we can get so distracted in these times and there is so much distraction in the, in our world with the modern media and everything it takes us out of alignment of our true selves our true nature and that true self and true nature that is 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 priceless it's priceless for we have like this so in our soul essence an energy of beingness and an energy of beingness is an energy of not needing to do not needing to change not needing to 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 do anything but to be and is it not when you think of this when you wake up in the morning and you're not feeling good and you think oh, and, and then the whole day goes wrong but when you wake up in the morning and you and you shift your your feelings to i feel great I feel wonderful and, and suddenly your day is a lot brighter and everything looks great. And those of you that are affected by the moon, those of you that are affected by stars, you will know that certain times of the year you're affecting, you're like, oh, I really need to work on shining myself or finding myself or finding that essence of who I am. Um, and But this time, you know, I've seen, you know, many people even grown men in this time of year suddenly let a tear fall down their cheek when they see a child so happy for the present that they received suddenly people become in contact with their feelings of who they are and there's nothing wrong with it for the greatest thing that we have is our ability to feel and our ability to share those feelings and to share them with our loved ones, to share them with everyone, and to enjoy that time. So I'm going to ask you now, if you're just going to write in the chat, what is, what is the most special thing for you when you celebrate Christmas? Just write in the chat, what do you do? Just write it down. What do you do? Is it hanging up um, ornaments, or is it um, going to um, baking pies for your, your, your spiritual church down the road? Is it, what is something that makes it magical for you, you know? Um, is it the energy? Is it, what, what is it? What's that, what is that something that's magical for you around Christmas? Just write it in, in the chat so that I can see um, that I'm not alone. Show me proof of life here. <laughs> Show me proof of life within this webinar of Let It Shine. And so when we think of that, and we think of um, the life as we are, um, we, we have the ability to heal people with our words. So here we've got lighting the candles and singing the songs of uh, Hanukkah. And so there you have like just the lighting of the candles and the singing of songs. 
that can enlighten you. Um, and it reminds me when, when my grandmother um, took me years ago to church and they were lighting the candle in the church. And I said, what's the candle for, grandmother? And she said, the, light, the candle, that's, that represents God. That rep, 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 represents the divine. And I was like, wow. And I was mesmerized by the candle for the candle for me represented the illumination of life that illumination of light and that divine essence. We've got another one, focusing on memories of those that have transitioned. Laughter and children brings me such joy. Isn't it? Yeah, Heidi, I really agree. You know, it's like focusing on memories with those that have transitioned. Um, yeah, it's like, well, it's, it, for me, it's like with my, with the loss of my brother, it's like, well, I've got to have a brandy for me and I've got to have a brandy for my brother as well, you know? So, you know, I'm, I'm sharing. <laughs> um, and in that way, it's, it is nice to think, oh, what would have happened when you look back over the years of those memories? Oh, what did we do together when they were here? Oh, yeah, they, were, they really did a good job of making that or they, they did that. And it's wonderful to look back at those memories. The laughter of children that brings me such joy. Absolutely. Um, you know, one year, it was five o'clock in the morning and my, um, my mother, who, who is um, still alive, ran downstairs with our youngest son, who was about five, and they went downstairs and woke us all up to open the presents. I'll never forget it because we were not ready. <laughs> we were not ready. But the laughter and the joy in our child's eyes, it really didn't matter how early it was. And, you know, it's, it's lovely, isn't it? And for me, it's the energy I share with family. Yes, I agree. It is the energy that you share with family. For it's that one type of year that we can create harmony within our family, even if it's just for a moment even if it's just, um, just for the day of celebration or two, two, three days, but we can create harmony with family. And a lot of people I hear them and a lot of mothers I hear, them, wouldn't it be nice to have the perfect Christmas? I say, what's the perfect Christmas? All the family are there and it's harmony. Yeah, yeah, I feel it. Tonight is the first night of Hanukkah for eight nights. Okay, so there you go. So that's, that's a celebration in itself. So we've got to light the candles, I believe. Um, and the, and it's, it's lovely, isn't it? Because the celebration of light and the celebration of illumination, um, so wonderful. The many lights in the dark, Christmas movies, the silence and cookies. Oh, absolutely, gotta have cookies. I mean, the amount of Christmas uh, movies I watch, I think, I don't know why I put on all those pounds this Christmas. It's like all the Christmas movies, it's the popcorn with cookies because we can't do it without all that, right? <laughs> um, but it is, it's, it's the lights. And you know, you know when you normally walk through streets that are so darkened, and then you walk through streets and like everything is illuminated with Christmas lights. And it's like it reminds you within yourself that celebration, and we all get excited just seeing it. And it's like everyone in their own way um, puts on a light. I mean, it's it's lovely. I love I love driving around in Christmas, and even when I used to drive to my work, whether it was a night shift or whatever, when I was working as a male nurse, it was lovely just to, to come home and or go to work and see those lights all the way there and all the way back. Um, just wonderful. And the Christmas movies, well, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a softy with Christmas movies because like, I could watch a marathon of them. And I know one year, I think we, we got up, um, this was before Christmas even started. I think we had a day off and we said, let's watch. And I think we watched all the Christmas movies until we were Christmas movied out, um, but um, it happens. Um, and yeah, but you know, finding that silence in yourself, 
and the cookies. Yeah. So here we've got Christmas trees, candles, Christmas songs, cakes, family transitions, remembering loved ones who have passed. Absolutely. And, you know, the spirit of the Christmas tree. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a magical thing, you know. And it's just uh, lovely. And I, I have, you know, it doesn't matter how old people are. Um, I let my family know. My daughter was working um, just out in the next town further up. She's 21. So putting up the Christmas tree today. Oh, wait for me. So we had to wait for my daughter. We had to wait for my other son who was working. And they all come home to put up the Christmas tree. Um, well, actually tell me how to put up the Christmas tree. But anyway, it's like that family thing of bringing it together and, and celebrating that moment, that time of family. And it's something that you can do together. And, you know, the candles, absolutely. The illumination of candles and the Christmas songs. Yeah. It's like they awaken that, that, that peace inside of yourself. Absolutely. The cakes, I mean, gorgeous. And family traditions, remembering loved ones who have passed. Absolutely. Family traditions. I don't know if anyone that's had those family traditions but there used to be, some people have the tradition of a, of a Christmas train going around a Christmas tree. I don't know if anyone's had that, where there's a train going around a Christmas tree. I'm just looking to see if anyone's putting their hands up here. Anyone had that? Um, I know some people in some countries do. And, um, and it's just, you know, wonderful to see the, the, the Christmas presents under the tree. And you get the most joy in your heart when you think, I wonder what they'll be like when they open them. I wonder if they'll light them. And remembering the loved ones of past. Here we go. Being together with family, which has um, decreased uh, a great deal in the past couple of years. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, pure joy of taking care of each other and expressing tenderness and care. Absolutely. Um, it is a pure joy of taking care of each other, isn't it? And you're just like, oh, yeah, it's just like, you know, and even if people are going through problems, they can come together and they'll be like, oh, I'm going through, oh, sit down, have a cup of tea or have a coffee and I'll just make some cake to go with it. And we talk, I remember going to my grandmother's house years ago and I was a teenager then go, oh, I really can't get on with my mum and dad. And then my grandma, sit down, I'll make you a cup of tea. Talk to her over a cup of tea. And at the end of the cup of tea, she'd sorted out my life problems. I'd have my piece of cake and it was ready for Christmas, ready to go. Um, and that is the power of coming together as a family, you know, in, in that way, isn't it? And the pure joy of being, being there for each other and expressing the tenderness and care. And one of the things we did one Christmas, we wrote on paper for each other um, all the gifts we felt that someone had. So we'd write five gifts for each other and we wrote them on paper and we gave them to each other so that we could read what the, all the rest of the family thought of their gifts, what they were good at, so that they could experience those gifts for themselves. That was a beautiful thing. And we made Christmas stars and we wrote on the Christmas stars the wishes we had for the world or the wishes that we had for humanity. And we'd write them on Christmas stars and we hung them in the tree. And that was also a very magical um, time. I think we did that on the 24th. This year, for the first time, I'll be lighting the uh, Konoka candles with my three-year-old granddaughter through Zoom. Yes, there we go. And that's going to be amazing as well. Isn't that going to make me, you're going to see those eyes of the three-year-old looking through the camera going, oh, I really enjoy this. Isn't this exciting? Seeing the delight in, in her eyes is priceless. I've just read that bit now. It would be priceless, wouldn't it? Um, so I don't like Christmas. My children ask me what happened to me in another life that makes me hate Christmas. Now, this is Nicole. Uh, and uh, Nicole sounds a lot like my son. Let me, let me see. Nicole, can you show me your face so I can see you? Can you just show me your face? Okay, lovely. So I just want to say... Um, my second oldest, my, my oldest son, he's the Grinch at Christmas as well. 
and we think he might have had something happen in the past life. <laughs> so you're not alone there. Um, and even my, like, we'll, we'll say nothing and he'll be like, everyone's going getting ready for Christmas and everyone's getting excited. And he's like, hmm, like this. And then the, there's my daughter saying, stop being the Grinch at Christmas. Stop it. Um, but, you know, you know, some people, um, you know, they, they, there might have been something in the past life. You know, who, how, how possible is it? But it is a time of year that we can use this energy to um, shift ourselves into a more spiritual peace of mind. When you think about it, because there are so many people, um, you know, that, that shift and change and become the best version of themselves, even if it is for a few days, and they become that spiritual self just for a few days, it has an effect, like I said, globally. We can use that in our meditations. And the energy, and I remember a very old teacher of mine years ago, he said, at this time of year, to meditate on Christmas Day and to connect to the spirit, he said, it's the best time. You know, it's the best time to do it. And I know in Germany, I don't know what it's called in England, but there's um, so many, is it the Heiliger Nachten? I don't know what it is in um, in, in, in English, uh, Sylvia, but the Heiliger Nachten. And they, they meditate on, on 12 days. And on these 12 days, they'll, they'll look at their dreams. And it's the, yeah, the Heilige Abend. And that's um, not the Heilige Abend, the Holy Nights. That's it, the Holy Nights. And it's 12 nights that you watch your, um, your dreams and what your dreams can bring you and how you feel on those 12 nights. And if you Google it, the 12 nights, um, uh, I think they, something, I don't know if it, it and uh, 12 holy nights, it's like it can tell, it, when you meditate on those nights, you can, you can get a feeling, what is January going to be? At? What's February going to be like? What's um, March going to be like? And you can go through the whole year by just perceiving um, what will the year bring? Um, it's a lovely thing to do. And um, I'm always aware of um, the essence of what's happening. And um, so whether I'm having, I, I pay attention to my dreams and I pay attention to what I'm feeling and, and just see, okay, what's going on and what do I feel is gonna, gonna happen or what do I feel is gonna, gonna change? But yeah, so we come together and we let it shine together for, it's like, you know, when you think about it, it's like a moment where we can let shine our true nature, that beautiful self of who we are. And, and it is a time that we, where they say, let bygones be bygones. We accept others and say, oh, you know, that's what he's like. Let's just accept him like the way he is for Christmas. And but I just know every human being is really looking for acceptance. Every human being is looking for love, care, and acceptance. I'm not talking about smothering. I'm, I'm just talking about just being accepted for who you are. And um, seeing people change when they feel they've been seen or been accepted. Um, I see someone's written to me that they, 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 this time of year, they see that people are easier. Um, so that they find it's easier to help people when they're sick because somebody's a nurse and they said, during this time of year, people are more easier to, to cure or help the person um, in, in their illnesses. And it's true, I, I mean, I've seen, um, working with people with Alzheimer's and dementia as a nurse, I've seen this time of year that people, the illumination of their eyes, like lightening up, remembering, like for a moment, even if it's five minutes, what Christmas is, um, and, and like becoming fitter, um, yeah. So a time of contemplation this time of year, letting go, 
forgiveness, setting yourself free, sitting in love and compassion, sharing your gifts with others, accepting others for their gifts and making a wish for the new year. And I think that sums it all up. So um, on that note, I'm going to leave it there. I'm just going to play a little bit of music um, just so that you can remember um, for yourself what it is for you. And this is something that I really love because it just reminds me of uh, what, what we can do with our light and our love and what